Um, and there are a few other specialized instruments. There's one that relates to nuclear safety, for example, which wouldn't really um, affect you. And there's a last mechanism, which is the European Development Fund, which, strictly speaking, is not an instrument. Because all of the so-called instruments under the EU, that money comes from the, uh, the budget of the member states. The money which all the member states put into the budget is then divided up and, and, and allocated to the different instruments. The uh, European Development Fund is slightly different because it takes core money from the community budget, but then member states also add bilaterally contributions. So it's a slightly different uh, mechanism and it means it has different reporting on it. So it's a lot of different uh, uh, administration related to this. But this doesn't really concern you because this is uh, outside of this region. Again, this is mainly in uh, Africa and Asia and it helps to deliver the humanitarian assistance of the EU. <coughs> but you might get involved because you might want to partner organizations who do use this funding. So if you are working internationally and you're doing work in Asia, maybe this will, uh, this will affect you. These instruments uh, are all different to EPA as another instrument, and these have slightly different mechanisms for delivery compared to, to EPA. And so does the community programs, which is the last thing I just wanted to look at. Uh, again, I guess that most of you probably have some exposure. Youth in Action uh, and Erasmus are two big community programs which non-member states often are involved in, but there are other ones. You need to know about the community programs. You need to do a bit of research to understand uh, whether your countries are eligible or not for them. Uh, the community programs basically are there to support EU policy within the European Union, which is why it's called community programs. However, if you're not a member state, if you're a candidate country or a potential candidate country or even a neighboring country, you can buy, your government can buy into these programs. So you basically make a contribution from the state budget and the EU uh, matches the money. It's not exactly like that, but it's a little bit like that. But you have to make a contribution and the EU then will match your funding at, at the national level. And uh, these programs cover all of the EU policy areas. There are many, many programs. At the moment, there's some around 27, I think, which are running which matches the number of member states, but there's, there's, there's nearly 30 different community programs. Uh, and they change quite regularly because they are there to support EU policy. So if there's a big change in EU policy, usually there will be programs to support the policy change. Uh, but very popular areas for non-member states are, are the, the, some of the programs that you've mentioned. The Youth in Action program is open, I think, to all of your countries. Uh, and it's an excellent mechanism because it's where a lot of people who uh, want to work in the voluntary sector begin to get their experience of understanding how what projects are and understanding something about the EU and, and, and doing uh, development work, basically. But Youth in Action works not through big projects, but it supports small actions, exchanges, networking events, and, 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 and things like this. Uh, youth in Action is one. Uh, there's something which is now referred to as the lifelong learning, yeah. okay, which maybe you've heard about. Lifelong learning is a big package of programs which includes lots of programs which were done before. Uh, for example, Erasmus, which you also mentioned, which is uh, uh, Leonardo, Socrates, all of these uh, philosophers were, uh, uh, are under this lifelong learning program. So these are all in the education field and there are different levels of education. So there are programs for primary, secondary education, then at university level, and for vocational uh, education. And you will have to uh, investigate in your countries exactly what your country is eligible for. But I'm sure that all of your countries are eligible for most of the lifelong learning programs. And you will have national agencies in your countries which are responsible to run these programs who link with, uh, with Brussels. The community programs are managed in the non-member states through specialized national agencies. So there might be an agency which is set up by the government to manage it, particularly for uh, the, the youth programs and the educational programs, or maybe an existing institution is given the responsibility. Uh, so for example, we have here the Framework 7, FP7. 
So some of you are familiar with that. This is a, a, a community program which funds research in the European uh, research community. Uh, and usually in your countries there will be a particular institution which will be given the responsibility to manage uh, uh, FP7. So in Turkey it's Tubitak yeah, and, and in other countries you, you, you will have one. Uh, but this is another big source of, of, of funding but maybe a little bit away from uh, uh, NGOs is mainly through uh, uh, universities and think tanks. Yeah. But then there are some other ones you can probably see here. Life is an is environmental program to do with the environment. Uh, there is a culture program. There is a small public health program. Uh, you'll need to go to, if you're not sure of some of these programs in your country, go to the website of the delegation in your country. You will see what programs your country is eligible for and they should have links which will take you to whoever manages, the national agency or the institution which, which, which manages them. So there's one other thing about the funding. We all know that this money, the way in which it is spent is mostly through projects. This magical thing called a project is where the, most of the money is used. But there are other kinds of actions, and we've talked about youth in action doing uh, exchanges and things like that. Um, but most of the money goes through projects. And part of understanding the big picture is understanding that the EU basically funds macro projects and micro projects. And very often micro projects, which are basically grant funded activities implemented by maybe NGOs or by other partners, they very often are part of a macro project. So for example, if you, uh, the EU might have a big um, youth employment program in a country, and that might be a big project, and part of that project may be a grant scheme, uh, providing grants to have initiatives on, 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 on youth employment. It's important to understand what the big picture is in terms of the macro project. So that if you're an NGO and you're competing for a grant, you also have to see what all the other parts of the project are doing and what it's linked. So making this link between the micro and macro uh, is, is important.